We have been on Zoom for almost a year. We want to know why young people don't like to show their face on camera. When my camera's on, I feel a little more stressed because every little movement, I feel like, okay, like there's probably at least one person who's paying attention to what I'm doing. Welcome to Master Guide TV. My name is Willis Turner and I'm the chaplain for the Hamilton Commissioners Master Guide Club. Tonight we will be sharing with you a little bit about mental health and we'll be using this little theme, Must You Look At Me? You heard me correctly, Must You Look At Me? But before we get into all that, we're going to just turn our Bibles to the scripture that I want to share with you tonight. It's from Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5. And it says, Let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Simply put, my brothers and my sisters, have this same attitude in yourselves, which was in Christ Jesus. Look to him as your example of selfless humanity. Yeah, that's how simply put. Look to him as your example for selfless humanity. Let's just bow our heads as we pray. Dear Jesus, we just want to give you thanks and praise, Lord, for spirit life to see this on a beautiful day. As we enter into this program, Lord, I'm going to ask you that you may send your Holy Spirit to come divinely close unto us. Our discussions, Lord, may they be in tune with your words. Help us to always look to you who is the author and finisher of our faith. Continue to bless us and protect us and keep us safe in this pandemic, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, yes. So now I will just turn you over to my fellow commissioners who will be having a little panel discussion about must you look at me? Must you look at me? Now let's hear what they have to say. Hey everyone, we have some questions that we ask to our young people. And those questions are around why is it that our young people do not want to show their faces on camera? So we asked a few of the Pathfinders and the Master Guide trainees um, these questions. We have been on Zoom. Why is it that you don't like to show your faces on camera? How does it make you feel? You know, if you're given the opportunity to minimize your camera time, you know, would that be better for you? And, you know, some suggestions as to, uh, other means or other platforms for communicating. And these were some of the answers that we received. So I think there's a number of reasons. So firstly, I think a lot of people or young people are multitasking. So for myself, for example, sometimes I'll have it um, just beside me while I'm listening to the conversation that's happening while I'm also maybe typing something on my computer or folding laundry, who knows? I think it's just a time that people can use it to do both, if, especially if they're maybe not wanting to speak but just want to listen and I think that's also a part of it. And for myself, I know if I'm staring at a screen for a lot of time, my eyes start to hurt so I've had to buy glasses just to help with that. But I believe sometimes just staring at a, the screen, especially if you're not talking or being involved in the conversation, people choose to just have the camera off. And also, like we've been seeing, a lot of times people are 
maybe not fully dressed or their surroundings are not not camera friendly. Um, could be some of the reasons why people choose not to show their face on camera. Um, and I think that's a lot of, you know, what it is. And people are probably also zoomed out, you know, they've been staring at a computer for all the time. And a lot of young people are also on school, which require them to also stare at a screen. So I think that could be a number of reasons why, you know, people don't want to show their face on camera. So personally, the reason I don't like to show or open my camera on Zoom calls, generally because I, I don't want to. I in other like school meetings anything like that no one cares no one asks questions about it things like that um so i've become comfortable with not having to do it i when my camera's on i feel a little more stressed because every little movement i feel like okay like there's probably at least one person who's paying attention to what i'm doing so i'm more conscious of my movements um i don't know if there's another platform that would be suitable i think zoom's probably the best platform for all the meetings and stuff that are going on right now in this day and age. And I, I I would feel more comfortable being able to minimize the amount of like camera time that I have to use. Um, but I think more than anything, I just wanna know why. Why it's wanted for us to have our cameras on as much as it is, because like in school, we don't have to. Number one, because their house may be untied due, due to waking up so lately such that they could end up running straight to the computers and then logging in to the Zoom meeting such that they're not able to switch on their cameras when when they are when they wake up late, for example like 9 15 and around 10 o'clock. And then second thing is they could be shy about themselves see, seeing their, seeing themselves on the on the camera yeah. because they they'll be lead to they'll be a bit scared that some people may just laugh at them when they when they present themselves on their camera. So personally, I can only speak for myself. So personally, I feel like it has something to do with like meme culture and the fact that like literally the internet turns anything into a joke so it's like somebody could honestly just like find something that you say funny or is like a facial expression that you made a way that you projected your voice like something like that like they could just record that and post that on the internet and then you become viral and it's actually serious in terms of showing the face i mean i'm personally fine with it um, I think it's, for me, if I know if it's a training, I will prefer to be on camera to kind of show that I'm engaged um, and listening to the speaker. However, if it's just a conversation or just someone doing a presentation that's not as formal, then I might choose to not be on camera depending on the content of the information. Um, so it really depends on what is going on in the particular um conversation that's happening i feel like there's just like a certain level of vulnerability that comes to like recording yourself um and even just like putting yourself out there on the internet and so i feel like yeah it just makes you feel more vulnerable than if it was in person i don't think um it will make a big difference personally i feel that the time on camera is about focus i think people have trouble with being able to focus for a long time on a screen so having it at the beginning and the end I don't know if that will make a big difference I think what might be helpful is having the meetings maybe shorter so that people aren't having to be on camera for the whole time or having some type of movement or something where it doesn't require being on camera the whole time um, I think those might be helpful Personally, I'm not completely opposed to like turning on my camera like in a meeting or something, but it's like that's not going to be my preference. It's never going to be like my first choice. So would turn like beginning and the end make me feel more comfortable? Probably a bit. I think 
I'm okay with using it. I think it's just what we have to use right now. So we're kind of gotten used to it. I think it's allowed for me personally to network and communicate with other people that I might not be able to communicate on a daily basis. Um, but in terms of, you know, having to use Zoom and other platforms, I think it's what we have to use at this point. Um, and I don't mind communicating because it's convenient and in my home. And I just have to, you know, just turn on the camera. So that works for me. Um, but while for some people, I think they're tired of um, the camera and prefer in person. So I really think it's just what we have to do right now. So I find myself becoming like more and more like comfortable with Zoom. And I feel like it's becoming more and more normalized. So like video chats, like even my classes or my clinicals right now are like in person and they're, we're forced to turn on our cameras and our mics. And at first I found it a bit tedious, but honestly, I find myself like enjoying it more and more because it's like the only, like it's the closest thing I can get um, to like an in-class experience. I think Zoom is the most easiest platform and it's able to use multiple people at once so i think it's the best platform for right now in terms of anything else i don't know if anything has as much thing as zoom as it's able to share screens and you know show games and stuff like that so i think it's just what we have to use right now and i think it's just keeping people entertained um not entertained but engaged in the conversation that's happening and if they're not really talking or not really being a part of it i think this is why people lose focus and choose not to be on camera so having a way to be more engaged i think that's would help in having people be more engaged and show their faces on camera i'm not really sure but i find that there's a lot of like online chat rooms like coming up like there's an app right now called clubhouse and it's like just your voice and it's like a picture of yourself so like opposed to like actually turning on your camera like you could just have like a set picture i don't know but that's it global youth day has been a day that young people around the world look forward to this past year many of us had to stop our plans due to covid19 instead of going out to impact the community we held a prayer session over the youth and those fighting this new virus 2020 was not what we expected but we are sure that 2021 will be different. We are calling for all young people, adventurers, pathfinders, ambassadors, young adults, and public campus ministry students to start planning for Global Youth Day 2021. Prepare to be the sermon, to be the hands and feet of Jesus, whether it's in person or virtual. Global Youth Day 2021, reaching out, cultures, colors, and communities. have heard the answers coming from the, our young uh, pathfinders and our master guide trainees and brother Ray, master guide Raymond Miranda Ray. What are some of your thoughts on what you have heard from our, our young people? I hear some concerns, which I think some of them are quite legit if I were to say so. I know some of them are saying that they are not prepared because their rooms are, are not kept well because when you go on Zoom, it shows on the background. So whatever it is that you, even things that you don't want to be seen can be seen on camera. So they're being super sensitive to the fact that if they're not ready, uh, then the Zoom will expose their rooms which are not cleaned or are yet to be cleaned. Or if they themselves are not well attired to be on Zoom or to be on public camera because when you're on zoom everyone can see you yes. so when you put on the camera and i and, and i i understand those concerns <laughs> and i also get the fact that um, some just don't feel comfortable i i know that when you go online especially because zoom uses internet so that that's how we can communicate and yeah. technology is such that people can always hack into any type of technology now the hackers the all they need is just time to hack into a system. You cannot completely say that they will not be able to hack into it. All they just need is time. And some people are super sensitive that when they hack in 
how far will that image go? Because once it's on the information highway, which is the internet, it can go anyway, and there's no stopping it. So they are legit. I mean, their concerns are legit. But although I would add quickly that the reason why we have Zoom is that we can be able to see each other and feel like we're together, even though we're not exactly physically are together. So when you block out the camera, it's almost like defeating the purpose of why Zoom was actually invented in the first place. It's almost like a teleconference. Yeah. So the main reason for having Zoom is that we can see each other and even communicate with our body languages. But if your camera is turned off, I cannot communicate with you more than just my statements my, or my verbal uh, statements. So, and yet communication goes a long way. It's what I say, how I say it, and how you see me on camera. That is now full communication. Thank you, Master Guy Raymond. I will uh, ask this, uh, Master Guy Denise Price the same question. What are your thoughts on, on these answers from our young people? My thoughts, my thoughts on these answers are that they're valid. They have valid concern, as, as Master Guy Raymond had acknowledged. They might be shy or they're, they're, they're not properly prepared. My answer to that is it's valid because I can identify with that also, you know. And on top of that, we need to ensure that when we're having a Zoom meeting, if we would help them to be more prepared. Yes, most time it's not, it's not like a sudden meeting. They're aware of it, but prepared in the sense of um, encouraging them to be more engaged. If if we're having a, a Zoom meeting, depending on what the meeting is, if we, if it's someone where we're it's the speaker, there'd be just one speaker without them being involved in it. They're just listening. That will not be a motivation for them to want to turn on their cameras. So I would suggest for us to try to motivate them. If we're having a presentation, we were going to have to be presenting things depending on how, and I did hear one of our MGT allude to that, that we need to shorten it. If we can, if we can't, we need to find ways to get them engaged. See how it is we can, you know, have them get them engaged, give them a reason to want to show their face. Because yes, we, we are happy to see them. And we want to see them, but if they don't really see it as being valid for them to be on camera, it won't, it's not going to happen. So we can first prepare them, help them to be prepared to want to be, to turn on their cameras because we're going to be engaging them. If we, sh if we're speaking, we speak half of the time and then try to engage them you know yeah. also we can have like welcoming sessions where we're going to welcome ask them to be welcome to sh so that they'll you know feel more engaged and want to come on want to show the pretty faces and the handsomeness yeah. <laughs> that's my thought walking and working with jesus is sponsored by the ontario conference it is a children and youth evangelism initiative. If rightly trained, they will help finish the work of the gospel. So join the adventure of walking and working with Jesus this year, 2021. Grow as a faithful young disciple of Christ. Learn skills in digital evangelism. Impact the world with the good news. Go and make disciples of all nations. Be a digital disciple maker. Learn how to be a digital missionary. Don't be a mere spectator, be involved. Be a positive and social influencer. Reach others through creative ministries. So be a part of WWJ 2021. Upcoming training events are set on February 7th at 11 a.m. to 12 noon. Next will be on April 4th from 3 to 5 p.m. And then on June 6th from 3 to 5 p.m. This training program is designed for children ages 6 to 17. To register, go to AdventistOntario.org. You know, I was reading up on, on this as well, a little research, and um, I did read that a, quite a number of teachers were having this problem with their students. You know, some teachers were saying they feel like they just 
um, talking to black boxes because nobody's showing their faces. So they don't even know if the student is there. And sometimes they may ask, they may call out a, question, a student and ask a question and no response, which means the student is not even in attendance. Yeah. So wow. teachers were having a, um, you know, quite a bit of a, um, an issue. However, it, we cannot legally force anyone to turn their cameras on. But I agree with you, Master Guy Denise, that we have to find more um, creative ways to engage our young people. Like one of our MGTs stated that she multitask. And this is another reason. Mm -hmm. Some another one alluded to the meme. You know, mm -hmm. people take something that you said and make a joke out of it. And so our young people are, you know, cautious of that. And um, another young person said that, um, and, and Master Guy Miranda alluded to that, that the, the house may be messy. Not everyone is um, fortunate to have their own rooms. Not everyone is, um, you know, live in, in dwellings where, you know, they feel comfortable because being on Zoom is invasive. Mm -hmm. You're, they're, everyone's inside your home. Everyone can see mm -hmm. your face. If you have a breakout of acne or you have like our young people you know they got acne they got maybe tired eyes or maybe they just don't want to dress up to be on on zoom they just want to be in whatever they want to be in so we really have to find creative ways not just for those who are not shy of the camera but you know other reason why they don't want to put the cameras on and then there are those who are shy so we, we really have to according to master guide price um come up with more creative ways so i'm gonna ask you master guy price what are some of the creative ways i know you mentioned you know having a welcome session and can you can you give us some more creative ideas or ways in which we can engage our young people and and get them to turn not only a safety issue as in the pathfinders you know we want to see the pathfinders it's a safety issue yes but we we want more ideas so give us some ideas and then i'm going to come to you master guide raymond with the same question give us some ideas as to how we can you know make our zoom meetings more creative and more um young people friendly i i would say uh, as i did mention before too one of the ways is um whatever we're presenting we try to make it in half, two separate half. If it's like an, a, a half an hour presentation, we'd like at 15 minutes, you would try to engage by, you know, it's okay, I've spoken for 15 minutes. What are your thoughts and what has been said before? Try to get them engaged as much as possible too. If we're presenting something that we can find a way to have them make a reference or do answer a question ask something in it to be engaged in the presentation as opposed to we just being in that teacher mode where we're just teaching art no if we find ways to engage them even in the teachings we'd be surprised to to see how much more we get from our young people because if this young person know that they will be presenting this just this one little thing they're going to call up their friends to come you know be on or to turn on because i'm doing this i will be doing this i will be doing that so if we can find a way to give them something to do i mean we're not going to force them uh, it's for their liking but to get them involved as much as possible in, in the meeting. And if we can preempt them, that would be good for them also to preempt them on what it is. And okay, I'm going to ask you to show your face so to, as to encourage others to show their face. I'm going to be calling on you. Um, young people reach young people much more easier than we adults do. So they will be motivation for each other when we engage them. Thank you very much. Master Guide Raymond. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, I, I like what uh, 
Master Guide Price has just mentioned as well. The participation component is key when you want some involvement from young people or from even adults, so to speak. As long as you give them something to do and say, hey, can you also do this part? And that will gear them towards preparing for that part because I think the aspect of preparation is also key. The way I look at it, uh, which is probably counsel even for others, I, I, I've attended some Zoom meetings, even church uh, meetings, where you find that uh, some seniors actually dress up, not necessarily like a Zoom attire, like some of us do, but uh, yeah. I mean, they take their bath and they wash as if they're going to Sabbath school to church that morning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then they sit in their Sabbath best yeah. with their tie and their jackets and their everything. Amen. So what yeah. it does, it puts you yeah. in that mood, the attitude that you have, the same attitude that you would have when you're going Amen. to church. the church yeah. or into it. Yeah. That's the same mm -hmm. one you should have when you come to Zoom. And yeah. that will give you the comfort that you need to actually go on camera and smile because you're yeah. prepared and your attitude yeah. is actually geared towards that. Because at the end yeah. of the day, we want you to feel like you are still in that setup. Yes. If I may add, uh, Master Guide Raymond, Please. if I may add to that, do you know how well um, that some of those individuals would feel knowing that when they have gone through that effort of being dressed up, if yeah. we just focus on them to say hi, I like your colors. I like just so you know, just a one minute highlight of them. You know how well that would encourage them to want to do this even more every week yeah. or, or however it is. Yeah. That's what I'm speaking about when we try to get them engaged in such a such a way. Instead of their dressing up and they've never been highlighted on the Zoom call to say, wow, you know. Master Guide Raymond, I like your your scarf, the, the colors of your scarf. I like something. That's yeah. the kind of motivation we need to start calling yes. out, identifying. Well, thank you, uh, Master Guide Raymond, Master Guide Price, for your timely answers. Thanks. And, um, you know, moving away from the young people, I have noticed that even us as adults, we don't like to show our faces on, on Zoom as well. So even, you know, board meeting, you know, pastor have to be asking, is anybody there? Nobody wants to show their faces, um, Sabbath school meetings or any other meeting that we're having via Zoom, a lot of us as adults. So it's not just the young people. And, and as um, master guides, you know, we are here to empower our young people. So we should lead by example. I know for me, um, I like to multitask and sometimes I don't feel like putting on anything, you know, fancy to be on the meeting. So I, you know, it's more like a, maybe a self image thing why I don't want to be on Zoom. But after listening to our young people and realizing that we do have some challenges there, then, you know, I suggest we take a second look at ourselves as adults and lead by example. Yes. Master Guide Raymond, Master Guide Price, thank you very much for your contributions to um, this panel. Amen. We appreciate your answers and we pray by God's grace that we would find creative ways to engage our young people, make our sessions more interactive, give them group projects to do if we have to, and you know, just acknowledge their presence and make them feel yes. welcome. That's you know, right. First Corinthians ten thirty one says that whatever we do, we yes. should do to the honor and glory of God. Of God, yeah. Oh.
being here for another presentation of MGTV. We look forward to seeing you next week again. Let us pray. O oh Lord, our Lord, your name is excellent in all the earth and worthy to be praised. We pause to thank you for allowing us, your children, to do this presentation. We thank you for the leading of your Holy Spirit in a very special way. We pray that as we have received a blessing, when we leave, we will be a blessing to others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.